with the release of the new TAC41 SAT piston from Edgy, I thought I would do a little guide. I'm going to be using a HTI SAT piston as it also comes with a part of the spring guide as the same as the TAC. And uh, just give you a few little hints and tips. And I do appreciate this is a long awaited video. We've just been quite busy. So anyway, let's get into it. Obviously open up the uh, packaging around the set piston itself. And these do generally come with a weight pre-installed. This is the uh, additional spring guide for the HTI, which we'll also have for the TAC41. And in this little bag, you'll have the O-ring that goes in the piston head and some spares. So if we should get this out here now. So, the first thing we're going to show you is how to get access to the weights, which is pretty much cases just unscrewing the base. These are only ever hand tightened, you don't need to really wrench on these. But uh, if they are quite slippery because you've got the packing grease, you can choose a small screwdriver in the base, and that will give you a little bit of extra purchase. And there's the weight. If you want to remove the weight again, it just unscrews from the base. Again, there's two small holes there, small screwdriver in one and on the base, and then you can separate them like so. The theory behind it is with a weighted piston that the more weight you add to the piston, the more energy, the more joules gets transferred to the BB whilst retaining an easy, an easier spring to cock at the back. So it doesn't make it a bit of a mission to cock your rifle. Again, when doing these up, all you need to do is hand tighten. Don't force them, they don't need to. So now we're going to put the O ring into the piston head. This is just to ensure the sides of the piston head get a great seal on the inside of the cylinder. I use a small flat headed screwdriver to gently push down just to make sure it's seated properly. Don't push too hard because you don't want to cut that O ring. This is the same with every sat piston. You have the O-ring that goes into the top of the piston head. Now that's done, you'll also see there's a small grub screw. Do not undo this. This is part of the main construction. You never, you never need to undo that grub screw. To adjust the air brake, it's threaded for the gives you the, uh, so much configura configuration choice and so you can fine tune your rifle. I use a pair of needle nose pliers on the actual air brake itself and then turn by the piston head. Don't turn by the rear because that won't actually, that will just spin the piston. The actual head will be loose. So if you turn it just under the rubber cup, you'll see the more you turn it, the longer it gets. The longer the air brake, the quieter the rifle is, the less jewels, the less FPS. This is the configuration you have. Now I use the Longbow um, lubricant here. It doesn't contain any silicon. If you use a silicon based lubricant, the shock absorbing ring will absorb that silicon because it's made from a silicon compound and it will inflate, expand and effectively make it useless. So we use uh, just around the side of the piston head. This is just, this is all in aid of the seal just to make it a 100% uh, seal, as I'll show you later. Then we also push down the sides of the piston head, just because he's been in the packet for a little while, it's just to aid again in that seal. These are spare parts, as I mentioned earlier. This is the spring guide attachment that you get with the HTI, similar to the TAC-41 in that you'll need to disassemble your TAC-41 spring guide in order to put the new edgy spring guide onto it. So if I just get a stock TAC-41 spring guide and I can show you how to disassemble this, you're going to need a 2.5mm Allen key in the base. And you'll also see there's a small hole in the spring guide itself. Again, small screwdriver, works charm gives you something to balance against. Now these are thread locked in, so a forceful but controlled turn will break the thread lock. 
and you can see it will don't strip the screw because otherwise you're going to be in all sorts of trouble trying to get this out but you see it'll come off there interestingly enough the 95 Nm spring doesn't work in the TAC41 unless you do this remove those thrust bearings put it back together as I'll show you again soon that gives the spring enough room to compress when you want to cock the rifle but when you're rebuilding you just put it back together as we've taken it apart so this is what's going to happen if you wanted to use a 95 Nm spring you take the thrust bearing off leave it off and then just do the spring guide back up again and as well this is what you're going to do with your edgy spring guide there's a hole in the edgy spring guide as well so you can get purchased to get it set up as such the other little trick to reduce spring twang in fact to remove spring, uh, spring twang is to get the spring on the spring guide. This is a HDI so it's quite massive compared to a lot of others but it makes it easier to see. Generous helpful a finger full of uh, the grease and just put it in between the coils of the spring whilst it is on the spring guide. It's a lovely cheap effective way to get rid of all the spring twang. Now just set this to the side. The other thing I would suggest as well is with your cylinder is to use the lubricant on the outside and a tiny bit as you can see here just on the inside as well again just aids with the seal with the piston. You don't need to do this often I'd probably do this once a month if that months every couple of months just strip down your rifle clean it re-lube it just keep it in tip top condition as you can see now this is the 100% seal and that's then we're releasing so you can see it's actually put got the pressure onto it and then just wipe off the additional grease that you'll get on the top of the piston head and that is effectively it all these parts the longbow lubrication etc are available on our store thank you